How's it going folks, it's Lobo, and welcome to a film that has undergone drama, negativity, heavy criticism, hate messages, and reshoots, which is none other than 2016's version of Suicide Squad. And just for those not aware, I am aware that it is mostly due to Warner Bros. negative involvement and impact on the film. This was done by David Iyer, but of course, now we're starting to see this sort of release the IR cut so to speak like with the Snyder cut I don't think that's going to happen but I am aware that this is not his particular vision of how he wanted the movie to play out but as I was saying they tried to create something which this movie was not from my understanding this movie well at least from Warner Bros standpoint they tried to make it more like a Guardians of the Galaxy meets Deadpool type of film rather than the one which was sort of teased within the first trailer I don't remember the trailers but again from my understanding everyone said the tone of the first trailer was completely different than what was shown afterwards so again I'm not blaming the actors in this the director or whatnot it all comes down to the executives because a lot today you're starting to see studio interference and that stuff which is again sometimes it can be good but mostly it's not because I really like when directors or if it's game developers or whoever, I love creating creative freedom and the ability to make something that you're like passionate about because you can really see somebody's work come to fruition in such a great way if they're really invested and they have the freedom to make their own decisions and their their thought process unravel in the way they want it to. Like if you put limitations, obviously things aren't going to be the way they're supposed to because you're putting these roadblocks that are unnecessary but just that out of the way I just wanted to say yes I'm aware of the situation this is at but it's kind of ironic because again like I said they tried to make it like a Guardians of the Galaxy type of movie and then it was uh, by all means it did not do well critically or with regular fans it did kind of well at the box office but again big budget movie with a lot of marketing still it's not comparable it's kind of weird how that works like shazam was very profitable even though it made less than like any other dcu movie it's just because of budget and marketing but again just going off rotten tomatoes i know the the whatever the doomed or the uh the forbidden site or whatever <laughs> critic score 26 and audience score 59 so both are like rotten or whatnot so from my standpoint not even watching the movie that already says a few things and of course all the things i've ever heard about this film not like spoiler things but just in general here's how people think about the movie it's not perceived very well again this has to do with reshoots changing the script and trying to make it a, a movie that it was originally not supposed to be but as i was saying it was supposed to be like a guardians type of thing it was a failure so now james gunn was like fine i'll do it myself and here we have the new The Suicide Squad that's coming out next month, I believe, which is part of the reason why I'm watching it now. And yeah, he is he wrote in is direct in well, past times now directed it, so very interesting. Kind of funny how that played out. I guess it had to do with Disney and him parting ways for a brief time before he was let back on to Hell of Guardians 3, but yeah. Uh so I'm just going to go into why I'm watching this movie. I said partly because, yes, there is the next one coming out in August, I believe. I think it's it not August 4th. It might be August 24th. I think it's something like 4. Maybe 14th. That's another number with the number 4 in it. <laughs> but, yeah, so another reason also is just because I'm running out of stuff on my channel. And there's a whole heap of movies that I haven't seen, but... I yeah, so we had to cut there because I was looking at my camera and how long it's been recording for, and it's 50 minutes. 50 minutes of a pre-discussion about the movie is how long I was talking for. That's what happens when I try to talk about anything superhero-related slash Batman-related. Shit just gets out of hand, so I'm like, nobody wants to listen to that. If you want to know about my opinions about the DCU or whatnot, you can just ask in the comments, and I'd be glad to answer as best as I can in a short little paragraph because I tend to go on and on and on. But trying to say what I said in that 50 minutes really just condensed so we can start the damn movie because, like I said, I've been talking for nearly an hour, 
and I don't know how long or how much of that I'm going to incorporate in my pre sort of discussion for this reaction but just as I was saying my biggest thing as to why I didn't watch the movie was because of the mess that the DCU was and total meltdown in my brain right now Jared Leto's Joker Jesus again it's hard because I nearly talked for an hour and now I'm just trying to like piece together what I said and decipher the chaos but it really what did kind of come down to how Jared Leto looked I know it's bad to sort of base my opinion or just total refusal to watch the movie off the look of the Joker but again I said it was more than just that it really did have to do with the state of the DCU and the fact that by the time this movie came out there was already a ton of Marvel movies such as two Thor movies three Iron Man movies three Captain America movies two Avengers movies I'm like it's just it's uncomparable to how things are being handled and obviously today there's still a lot of sort of clashing within the DCU it's still like a mess but just anyway disregarding that Jared Leto's Joker uh I'm getting the hiccups I've been talking so damn much but yeah it just it kind of just doesn't work for me we have I think he's an incredible actor but his appearance I'm sorry I'm getting the hiccups and trying to hold them because when I talk for an hour straight, it happens, and I've also been drinking water. But no, Jared Leto, his appearance was my biggest issue because I'm used to this classical look of Joker. I I, I think I cut out the part, but just to re-say, as a kid growing up, there was a number of DC-related things that I watched, even if they were like way older than I was at the time. I still watched them, such as Christopher Reeve's Superman, Michael Keaton's Batman, there was Superman the Anim Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, the Justice League series, then Teen Titans came out, and there's just so much beautiful DC content. So those were my first exposure to those characters and such, and the Joker, because Mark Hamill is like the best version of Joker. I know live, live action and animation are completely different, but it's the same way that Kevin Conroy is Batman. It's the same thing. Mark Hamill as the Joker is just like, it's beautiful it's perfect so there's that also with Heath Ledger who I think is the best live action Joker he did an incredible job honestly stole the Dark Knight in terms of whose movie it was it was supposed to be the Batman movie but it, his performance was just so shaking and motive well I wouldn't say motivated but it was just so powerful and incredible that he really did kind of steal the movie and, and his dialogue too for the Joker was fantastic my favorite line is when Batman asks him why do you want to kill me and he's like I, I don't want to kill you what would I do without you no you complete me I'm like that is the perfect way of summarizing the odd relationship the double sided coin of Batman and Joker one is there to corrupt while the other is this sort of humanist trying to see good and do good and refrain themselves by from becoming the other and it's like this weird relationship that goes back and forth forever I just thought it was an incredible way to really calculate their entire relationship throughout the years into like a single sentence. But anyway, Joaquin Phoenix did an amazing job. What a hell of an actor. The Joker movie was amazing. It was very dramatic and crazy and sort of this oddly beautiful film because it was so grounded and realistic and had a lot of implications on morality and how we perceive the world and how we treat other people. But it wasn't really like a Joker film in terms of like comic Joker. That was my, I wouldn't say issue with it, but I regarded it as a sort of Elseworlds Joker. But now, again, on the Jared Leto, it's like the same story. He's not my perception of what Joker is based on his appearance. It is a very interesting one with the grill and the tattoos and such. It's definitely going for some more modern, but it, it just, it doesn't work for me again because I've been so exposed to sort of the same not necessarily iteration but the same design so to speak of just like the plain white face red lips green green hair that's semi messy or whatever and the animation is more like refined and classical but again i'm a bit hypocritical too as well because one of the best things uh it's gonna be it's gonna be hard not to talk about batman but just mentioning robert pattinson for those who there are of course there's still some people against him if you don't know i'm totally for him 
I research the Batman every single day. I watch the trailer at least twice every day. I'm not going to go into that. But for his interview on why, or just in general about Batman, he said something which was fantastic that should set every damn fan at peace when it comes to superheroes. He said that essentially, if you want to do a comic accurate Batman, you can literally do anything. The playing field is enormous because if you do one thing where Batman's a killer like Ben Affleck's, which I, again, for me, if you don't know, that did not work for me either. I was not a fan of that. It's comic accurate to at least one comic. You can just throw the wrench out there and it will land somewhere where there's a comic about something. You know what I mean? But again, sure, there are more mainstream that take the same ideals or just character designs. You know what I mean? Like one thing really is Batman's no killing rule. That is very prominent in a lot of comics and that's the more mainstream type of thing. So when they disregarded that in the movie, Batman versus Superman specifically, I was like, eh, no, this doesn't work for me, but I'm not here to talk about Batman. But it's sort of like that. So I don't want to be hypocritical and say, I don't like this take or iteration of Joker when literally you can have a number of different Jokers because there's just so many iterations. Whatever you do is like has a 99% chance of being comic accurate to at least one comic version, which undoubtedly has some fans who are like, yes, finally, I've been waiting for this take on this character. So again, I, I want to address that and not be hypocritical, but as someone who's a fan of certain other things, seeing Joker like that, I'm just like, you know, so I'll reserve judgment. But as I said earlier, this movie did not do well for a number of reasons, the interference and the ire cut and such. So I'm just going to watch it and see how it is. I'm just mostly doing this because I want to have like a pre-knowledge to James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, which I expect to be a lot better because James Gunn is a amazing director and writer and he's nailed these sort of group type of movies. So. I'm interested to see that and we're gonna get started dude I'm well technically I cut it all out so if you know what you have no idea literally talked for nearly an hour most of it wasn't even about the Suicide Squad it was just about the state of these the DCEU and how the DC universe likes to kind of copy Marvel in terms of releasing Batman vs Superman to replicate how Marvel is releasing Captain America Civil War now the thing with the multiverse where Michael Keaton's Batman is returning. We have Supergirl and Flash is gonna apparently reset the DCUU and they're trying to put that out at the same time that Doctor Strange Multiverse Madness is coming out and stuff even though they don't have a proper cinematic universe. See what I mean? That, welcome to my mind. When we get into shit like this, it just goes on and on and on. And then when you ask me, or well, let's say you did ask me because nobody asked me a question like this because again, this is just a hypothetical situation someone were to ask me what did I just say I'd be like I have no idea because my mind just kind of blots out shit so, so yeah I'm sorry about that and I I don't have to incorporate this into my reaction either because if this is the first time you're seeing any of my content you're probably like, dude this guy is on drugs <laughs> I'm not but I just have like that sort of very passionate fandom chaotic energy when it comes to superheroes and especially again the dc universe because that is what i grew up with and especially this guy right here my main man the batman so also now that reminds me i should talk about a bit but what i even know about this movie what's the plot the plot i have no idea but i'm assuming because it's the suicide squad i don't really know too much about them but again, it's it's kind of heavily a lot of Batman villains, which I do know a lot about their characters individually, but this group of the Suicide Squad is not my area forte. But if I'm not mistaken, Amanda Waller will be in this because I know they do the thing where it's like they have the implants that will detonate unless they do a specifically like certain missions and stuff and complete them successfully. But I don't know if that's the storyline for this one. Or perhaps that'll be the storyline for the next one. Because if it's not the storyline for this one, then already like the plot is going to be a little interesting. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. That's all, everything I know about this, about this movie. So anyway, we're going to get started here. And if I have any final thoughts, I will inform you. But if not, I should just start this because I don't want this to turn into more of me just talking. So for those who watch these... I salute you, dude. If I could give you a high five, I would. So there you go. 
I promise. For the next sort of movies we do that are, because there are going to be more DCEU movies that I react to, it won't be this long because I kind of got all my thoughts out about the DCEU. So, yeah. Let's just watch this damn thing. Yeah, as I said earlier, I had to heavily take out some of the stuff I said because I did rant for like nearly an hour. So if there's something that I did not mention, specifically something that my opinion would kind of go against what others think about the DCEU or at least the state of it and you're just like wondering my thoughts on it, just feel free to leave a comment and just asking me because if you want to know my opinion on it, I will gladly give it because I obviously have said a lot about it. And if I had to cut that out for the sake of time, then I would be glad to let you know what I think about the mess, which is the DCU, which again is no fault of the directors. But anyway, yeah, here we are with this, well, not the, just blank Suicide Squad. <laughs> so here we go, man. For those who are watching my reaction now, I did mention earlier in my pre-discussion about my opinion on Jared Leto's Joker. So if you see me start kind of criticizing throughout the film, please. I'm sorry, please don't hate on me. It's, it's it's all right, I promise. Oh yeah, I forgot Will Smith is in this movie. Doesn't he play Deadshot? Only my friends call me Floyd. Floyd Lawton. Damn, he got ripped as hell for this. Rat shit. Everything a grown fella needs like you. <laughs> this is an Arkham Asylum, right? So we've seen Deadshot, now we see Harley. Name is Margot Robbie, and I think her casting as Harley Quinn is phen phenomenal. She's like perfect casting for Harley and Quinzel. Want these bars? Yeah, those bars. Oh my god. <laughs> the hell am I watching, dude? This is like an erotic fanfic. I see where I want, when I want, with who I want. Oh man, I love you. I mean, <laughs> that's very Harley Quinn like. I always felt bad for her character in general because in the comics and just I would imagine even in this universe that the Joker is very manipulative and abusive towards her because again she was a doctor his doctor specifically and he like brainwashed her essentially the man flew across the sky and then it changed again when he didn't that Amanda Waller oh they mentioned Superman so there's some interconnectivity AKA Deadshot. Not bad, that's a pretty sick costume. Uh, this is weird, this is very video game like. So far, I like his, the design of his costume and Harley Quinn. I think those are great. I mean, sure, Harley Quinn does have some of those tattoos as well, but, but the actress, I just think is perfect casting. Okay, okay, relax. There was an accounting error. We said it. A million dollars. Damn, that is so dead shot, ricocheting bullets. Oh, that was awesome when I you had to like investigate him and if you didn't play it. Arkham Origins, that shit was awesome. Mama says I can't live with you because you kill people. That's not true. That's a lie. She's lying to you. I still love you. I just gave an anonymous tip to the right guy in Gotham City. Is Yo, yeah, no, really? It's over, Deadshot. I did not think Batflick would be in here, and especially this soon in the movie? Damn, dude. And he's gone. So now we have the man who never misses. Not a bad Batman appearance. Join the circus. Oh damn, there's Her Arkham Asylum. Harleen Quinzel, psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum. Quinzel. So they're just going through everyone's Quinzel. origins now. With you. A machine gun? Talk about a workplace. He just looks so weird. Did they paint over his eyebrows too? No, I'm just gonna... gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. Man, this is like really the comic relationship between these two is not rosy at all. It's very sad and tragic. Ah, ah, ah. I love this guy. Yeah, laugh is so weird. That was just the beginning. Is he driving a Lambo? And there's, 
There's bad flick again, what the hell? Damn, bro. Oh, this had so much potential. That's your ruining date night! There's a lot of weird camera shots. It might be due to reshoots. <laughs> Damn, he just left her. Oh, I, I'd choke her for you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Even his punches underwater have so much impact. <laughs> I knew she'd do that. So, it's kind of weird, bro. <laughs> what a weird scene. The Flash is in this too? No honor among thieves, eh? How did this movie fail, bro? Oh my god, you Warner Bros, you did so wrong! Oh, Jesus. What the hell is that? His name is Waylon Jones. Killer Crocs in here? A witch. I'm talking a flying spell casting, making shit disappear, witch. Enchantress? Met a human more powerful than any we've encountered. The Enchantress. Some say the witch has a secret buried heart, and whoever finds it can control the witch. You want to put our national security in the hands of witches, gangbangers, and crocodiles? A lot of fantastic DC characters. I, I just feel like they misused them. Obviously, again, studio interference. I know, but still, that makes me sad, dude. In a world of flying men and monsters, this is the only way to protect our country. Okay. <laughs> there was an idea. <laughs> Team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. Like fight the next war, defeat the next Superman. Not on my watch. I am excited for the the Suicide Squad game, though. That looks very interesting. And apparently it is set in the, uh, the Arkham universe. So I'm interested to see how that will play out. Oh, it's so creepy. That was, that's a cool effect, though. Her design is really good. Uh, uh, please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. <laughs> I think the sound effects for Killer Croc are great, but it, it still looks a little odd. It's definitely a mix of prosthetic and CG, but it's weird to see him as like human height. I think I'm I think I'm just spoiled by the Arkham games because they had like the perfect character designs all around. That's cool. Unfamiliar with his character, but so far I like his story that he's like kind of repenting for his actions. Oh, shit! Give me the word, boss. I'll drop Everybody him. Everybody calm down. He shoots me. I want you to kill him. And I want you to go clear my browser history. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah. So far, I'm really liking him as Deadshot. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I have, like... Supervised visits, but our stank ass boyfriend can't come. Donnell can't come. Darnell's out. He's out. Third, <laughs> my daughter's whole You're in no position to make any demands. Oh, I'm sorry. Are they gonna put the bomb in his head? That's <laughs> so weird. I love how there's just a weapon collection and then like baby outfits. Okay. You gotta call upstairs and tell them to float me in their 10K. You got it. Boss wants to see him. He kind of looks like Mark Wahlberg. I just realized that. Man, this is really like blackmailing Davy Jones when they got the heart. I know who Enchantress is, but my knowledge on her is really not that extensive, but I'm aware of her character, yep. not her backstory. Oh. oh, damn, she just put her brother in there. There's a lot going on in this movie. It is pretty chaotic. And very, very, very fast paced. I mean, it's understandable, but it's a little faster than I even anticipated. 
<laughs> what the? <laughs> oh my god, oh, is it like morphing into, yeah. So like his, do we have our villain finally for the movie? <laughs> you gotta cool him off. Well, I like the music choice. Yeah, they're doing the implants. It's from Mr. J. You gonna tell him I took care of you? You're so screwed. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Why is the guard like the MVP of this movie? He's in like every scene. Just like Batman. Okay, uh... Again, for some people that don't really know DC, there's like no plot to explain this. Yeah, they're here. Alpha, <laughs> bravo team on me! I mean, honestly, the best part of this movie is their song choices. The soundtrack is amazing. You disobey me, you die. <laughs> they get to put their costumes on. That's yeah, weird seeing Killer Croc in a hoodie. It's more of a mask than a helmet. Interesting. <laughs> this whole joint. Ain't that right, I say? You got nothing to worry about for me. I'm cool, homie. Behold. Mission, you get time off your prison sentence. Fail the mission, you die. Anything happens to Colonel Flag, I'll kill every single one of you. Damn. I see everything. Nice job on Amanda Waller, dude. That's just like her. She seems nice. It's, it's so weird. It's like I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like some of it's good, but it's just like failing to max out its potential. So in an attempt to create this team, one of their members became the villain that said team was supposed to prevent. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, they weren't bluffing. Now that's killer out. Okay. You want to keep playing the Hollywood Squares version of I'll blow your face? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Holy shit. Are they gonna let him go? Good riddance. Holly, he dies, we die. I mean. With just no t context. This scene just kind of looks like a a bizarre sci-fi movie rather than a DC movie. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining, but it's just like such a weird premise. Are you some elf princess? It's better this way. Trust me. Oh, yeah. This is so bizarre, dude. Yeah, it looks like his daughter's coat. What's like Joker's plot line in this? It's just been kind of going, and there's just been no mention of him. Pussy. I will knock your ass out. So weird. The mask looks like odd, but then when he puts it on, it looks like a very refined helmet. I mean, it looks really good. But it's just weird to see it's like a flat mask. I mean, obviously a mask is flat, but it's not inflated by your head, but still. <laughs> it just says money to block it. <laughs> that was cool. Dude, this guy's always getting dragged off. Holy shit. What you gonna do? I'm touching you. I'm touching you. Do something. Touch me. Do something. You wanna see something? You wanna see something? Yes, I wanna see something. 
Why was he up there all this time? <laughs> Legit, he just pulled a Scarlet Witch. Were they out of his chemicals? <laughs> Flashback. Nice what transition. Do you die <laughs> okay, Harvey Dent. He's like willingly jumping the vat of chemicals. Holy shit, that was a far fall. Oh my god, what a backsplash. That must have killed. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're going for a great, like, comic scene, but it's just like with the music and the design and shit, it's like, it's odd. At least, again, this is just my opinion. It's just, it's just weird. That sounds good. You guys want to go home? Hmm? Or well, you want to go back to prison? I'm not going back to prison. Don't get high spirited on me and ruin a good thing. I like her. Okay. <laughs> Is it the prison guy? <laughs> what? Oh shit, he's disarming them. I mean, uh, at least he came back for her. I've got some grape soda on ice and a bearskin rub waiting. Kind of has like a a deeper and gruffer kind of growly, snarly voice as Joker in this. Target destroyed, ma'am. Thank you. Now get me off this roof. I mean, he appears in the nightmare future, so he doesn't die, or he's not dead. And that's if I remember the Snyder, I know the Snyder Cut isn't canon, but... Well, it is the fans, but I, I know Warner Bros. is in their own dimension of what they think is real, but... Didn't, like, Bat like you know, Batman in this say that Harley Quinn begged him to kill joker like it, this is the nightmare future so it's just interesting this is not over nah, it is for me we had a deal without waller you got nothing i like deadshot i mean obviously he's done a lot of wrong but i like when they present a like complex villain that's more than just like one dimensional because like he has his daughter and some degree of feelings so she thinks joker's dead i'm his do your worst, bitch. It's kind of weird that this is going on. You'd like think, I mean, technically Justice League is informed, but at least Batman or Wonder Woman would try to intervene and help out with this shit going on. I mean, hell, we saw the Flash in here. I know this is taking place in a different city. Actually, I don't even know which city this is taking place in, but still, like... This is kind of like on the premise of an Avengers level threat, so these big hitter superheroes would definitely be like, let me go over there and help the freaking apocalypse going on. Wonder why none of this was mentioned in Justice League. Either versions, I'm, I don't remember. And that's how she escaped from Waller. So now you know. So I guess they didn't know the threat, but like we did and they did. But they know they can't defeat that, so they're like, yeah, just kill us now, get it over with. I don't kill women or children. I do. You know, I just... I don't know what I do. He killed his kids, too. Didn't you? That shit. Own it! What do you think was gonna happen? Huh? Normals is setting on the dryer. People like us, we don't get normal. Why is it always an inside? They're ugly. Not me, shorty. Mm. I'm beautiful. <laughs> the hell? That was a really good scene until that part. That might have been the best scene in this movie. And then Killer Croc is like, not me the walk beautiful. It's a little odd for Killer Croc to say. I get it. I'm probably just spoiled by the Arkham games. It's over. Everything is over. Everything. You're free to go. 
welcome. This this movie does definitely have like good moments or sort of the makings of what could have been a really great film. But again, it studio interference, but it's like it's there. I feel like the structure is there, but it's just not situated right or whatever. It's like a house with really good bones, but the outside is just like garbage. That's a, that's a shitty comparison or analogy, but you, you understand what I'm saying? Like the foundation is there, but it's just not stacked or uh, executed well. Just have Croc do it, dude. No need to swim. You got this. I'm not asking, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Killer Croc said bruh, dude. Oh my, I'm so sorry, dude. I can't believe I'm witnessing that. This movie does have great moments, but then you pull shit like that with Killer Croc. Huh. So that's your old lady, huh? huh. Right, well, you need to head there, smack on her ass, tell her knock this shit off. Right, <laughs> that be Waiting for you all night. Step out of the shadows, I won't fight. The hell? I'd be able to take her more serious if she wasn't like twitch dancing you know I, it's a little cause here yeah, she's sitting there going like <laughs> you know what I mean it's like it's a little funny so I, I just can't help it just, just announce that out loud Oh shit! I wanna see God more. <laughs> oh shit! It looks like a mix of um Kotal Khan and Ghost Rider. Get it, Mike! No. Get the team guys stay away. Wait, so the dude said the bomb had to die in order for it to go off? How did a bomb under the floor kill him when Diablo was like burning his hand through his heart, bro? I don't know. <laughs> I lost my pudding. Gonna try to stab her. You mess with my friends. <laughs> Uh, just just like that it worked. Oh, okay. I Thought it would be her like boyfriend to try to make her take control of her own body I thought it'd be like one of those like type of emotional scenes, but not nah, Harley's just like get you baited <laughs> To be together is if you don't pull the trigger Daddy, I love you Damn it that's messed up. Holy shit, that's kind of creepy. And that's why he's dead shot. Be funny if it was like the Joker's gun where it just has the flag that says bang and he'd be like, what the hell? Then the world ends. <laughs> cool what if ending. That was a great shot, man. Hey, I'll do that. <laughs> I'm not a hugger. I'm not a hugger. You bring June back or I'll crush this! Go ahead. You don't have the balls. She'll be back. June. What did somebody say? I mean, it wasn't hard to guess, but... Gotham. I'm gonna hotwire your car. Need a ride? <laughs> your ass is not driving. Why not? Oh my god. <laughs> Darling, I'm walking out of here free, man. Or we're gonna start having some real fun. Why don't we have some fun? I mean, what did they expect? That's how far the bullet actually goes? Yeah, that's that's great way to explain math. 
doing doing calculus shit with, <laughs> with freaking bullet trajectories. What the hell is that? Oh, it's adding up the plot for the, the second movie. <laughs> or is it going to be Joker? Uh, I mean, it says Joker on his chest. Okay. <laughs> Written and directed by David Iyer, uh, but not willingly. <laughs> I can keep a secret. Okay. What do you I mean, she knows he's Batman. Questions about Midway. Building in the Justice League. Okay. My friends and I will do it for you. Oh my God, bro! This went so much for Pluto. Oh, bro. If everything worked well, and then you had that scene was, that scene could have been. That scene was awesome there. Cause he's like, nah, leave it to the Justice League, baby. But then it was just like, Wah. you know. I'm not talking about the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut was a lot better, but obviously you can't have a four-hour movie in the. Th I'm just, I'm just saying, if something good would have arrived in 2017, things might have been different, man. Oh, it's like it's like saddening and heartbreaking to see shit like that. Like that was supposed to be such a good setup, and that was such a good scene, but. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll t we'll talk about this. Hey. Okay. Well, there we have it. Suicide Squad. Uh, like I said, I I try not to be like super negative about films. I always try to have like a positive attitude and outlook on like everything and stuff, but it's hard to like lie by not criticizing or just like pointing out a few things. But I, I, I don't mean to like speak for myself, but I think I, I did a good job without like totally shitting on the movie and being like open to interpretation and stuff. Because as I said, watching it, I saw hints of like, oh my God, this could have been like really good. It has a lot of great characters, a lot of good storyline and sort of conversations that they're having and such. But obviously there are a number of problems, which I think are like sort of hammering down what's good about it. And just again, coming in and looking at this with the amount of just incredible characters i know they're like villains and technically villains are secondary characters to a superhero which is perfectly normal but you have like big characters even if they're not necessarily like hey these are some heroes villains so they're secondary characters like joker heavy hitter harley quinn another heavy hitter deadshot killer croc less so but they're still like big names if you're in the dc comic world and then you have cameos from The Flash. Like three cameos of Batman slash Bruce Wayne. And then you have Amanda Waller with, again, the Suicide Squad. Like, And then you have all the other characters, Captain Boomerang, Enchantress. Uh, yeah. Was that one? Am I, am I complete? Uh, and then Diablo, I think the name was. I, again, I'm unfamiliar with that character and Enchantress, really. I've heard of Enchantress, but Diablo... I haven't quite. Maybe I have and I'm just forgetting. But as I said, it has so many great comic characters. And again, the cameos of the real freaking heavy hitters in Batman and Flash. And somehow this movie just stunk at the time it came out. I mean, it still has a lot of problems. I wouldn't call this a great movie. I wouldn't really call it good, but I wouldn't call it bad. I, I think it was just like meh, so to speak. But again, it had good moments and like oh my god it's trying to it's there's like glimpses of what could have been greatness but then it's just like watered down but as i'm saying like with again with the characters i listed the heavy hitters the secondary the minor the whatever this should have been a smash in terms of like likability and box office i mean it did fairly well at the box office but like it should have been more and really the reception should have been way better critic and audience score like this movie should have been so much more again just based off the characters themselves it's like it's like kind of sad that it was i want to call it a colossal failure but still technically it was a failure even more so than man of steel and batman versus superman i'm not trashing i'm getting the hiccups i'm not trashing on those movies calling them 
failures and just terrible. I, I'm just saying that they weren't what Warner Bros. expected for a level of success. And this one was just like not even a bar below. It was like two or three bars below. But that's just that's just whatever. They're apparently they're reinventing it with James Gunn, obviously. But like I said, a lot of the more mature sort of conversations they had were good. There were some jokes that were like you know what I mean but then some were like good but it, it was just like a mixture I guess one of my watching this I can see problems in really pacing was one even though there's a lot of characters in let's say Guardians of the Galaxy I, I don't mean to compare to Marvel but it's hard not to two different uh companies or whatnot but they're still heroes and they're still trying to do the same exact thing they're following the same rules so it's really not out of the question but take guardians of galaxies galaxy or avengers you have all these characters juggling for screen time but there's a way to kind of slow it down and give everybody their fair time while explaining things but for this movie i just felt like it was like so fast paced and they kind of just like blobbed plot in your face as well as a means to like justify sort of their world building slash characters even if even when i watch marvel there's certain characters at the first time you see them you don't know much about them assuming if someone's not really like a heavy comic reader but they do a way of like subtly touching on their origins in a way that can make you understand the character but obviously then again they most of them have their own solo movies which is which is totally different but here i just felt like there were so many new characters and they're uh, they're just trying to have everyone understand them in a way and they're literally just doing all their origins at once. So I'm like, that's not, that's not working. For me, that part didn't work where they're just like, okay, everybody's origin, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? I feel like that wasted up too much screen time for the actual like development of the characters. That beginning just took up way too much time. And it was, I felt like the conversations were very fast paced I don't know I, I just but then towards the end there were the good scenes like specifically in the bar when they were the guy was talking about his family and then the uh the soldier dude I just can't recall anyone's names he was talking about his girlfriend Enchantress and shit like those those were good moments those were good emotional moments but then specifically the one with Diablo was cool well not really cool it was sad it was about his family and stuff but then Harley Quinn was like own that shit and stuff. I'm like, wow, that's that's some that's some great conversation these people are having. Yes, they've done wrong, but there's still like some subtlety of humanity and good within them. And it's nice to see it sort of come out. And again, they're having that conversation about it and everything is sort of being like this morality play and such. I'm like, wow, this is a very unique situation. But then Killer Croc is like, what did he say? He's like, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. But then he started saying bra and shit. I'm like, dude, Killer Croc, what? <laughs> oh, man. I sh that, that was just bizarre for me. Just speaking out, I'd say my two favorite characters in this were definitely Deadshot. I thought, I'm surprised. I, I mean, I don't really see a lot of Will Smith movies. I saw him in Men in Black, obviously, but that was a long time ago. I just generally don't watch his movies. I did really like him in Aladdin, though, but that's, like, <laughs> that's like way different. But, no, I think he did awesome as Deadshot. And he really jacked up. I was like, holy shit, he took this role very seriously. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he's just not going to be in the next one. I would assume that's either for creative differences or just the fact that it's sort of, at the moment, like a failing franchise, and he's, like, jumping off the burning ship, but... That's just what I think. And then, I, I already mentioned it, Harley Quinn, I thought she was great. Margot Robbie is a uh, fantastic, as I said, fantastic casting. Some of her jokes were like, not really hitting, but it's to be expected, it's Harley Quinn. And again, you could see like the subtlety of her sort of abusive, one-sided relationship with Joker. I mean, he kind of did rescue her though, but still, her real like origin well i wouldn't say origins but her relationship with the joker in the comics again it can vary because comic interpretation is all over the place but generally it's like sad and stuff so i i anytime i see her character i always feel like bad for her and stuff because it's like it's weird she was like 
honestly subdued by a demented mind in the Joker. Like, she was his psychiatrist and stuff. So, I always feel bad. Obviously, in, like, Batman the Animated Series, they they subtly hint to it with his attitude, but they wouldn't, because it's more of a kid's show, they wouldn't outright be like, oh, my God, here's this general kind of dark shit about their relationship and who's really in control and stuff. But, no, that, but that just kind of builds into Joker's character of his, like, oppressive and, like, sort of dominant behavior and stuff. But they've always had a unique relationship. I mean, I'm just speaking of, like, specific comics and iterations. It's not always like that, but generally speaking, it kind of is. But, no, I, I did like her character and stuff, but uh, she was... Actually, no, that's not... Because, again, it's just... It's, like, weird to see this in live action because I've never seen Harley Quinn in live action. I've only had her, like, being seen in the animated movies I've watched. Obviously, Batman the Animated Series is a huge one and the Arkham games. And then, like, some comic facts, tidbits there. Because, I again, if you know me, I am a massive, massive, massive Batman fan. But if we were put, like, a level of expertise, I wouldn't say 100 just because I don't read comics, it's it's not because I'm not interested. It's because I just I detest reading so much. But my understanding of the character is easily a hundred, as well as like the rogues gallery and shit. But I like put like general knowledge of anything Batman related, like maybe like a ninety five to ninety nine. I wouldn't do a hundred just because I don't read comics, but I know a lot. That, I know a lot about him. I'm just talking about this boy specifically. But again, with Harley Quinn and stuff, her like weird relationship with the Joker is kind of obsession and it's sort of a uh, how do I kind of word this like looking not necessarily for acceptance but like recognition with him that she can be sort of his equal or whatever again it's like a very tragic thing and stuff but I don't know if this is a spoiler but technically I think I heard in Birds of Prey that she like broke up like broke up with him again i don't know if that's just because they couldn't get jared leto back as the joker but in terms of her character that's amazing because again the joker is this very negative entity and oppressor in her life so it's really nice that she's able to cut ties and stuff again it's like weird because you're putting into perspective two very very famous comic characters but they're dealing with like a real world issue that it's very prevalent in our society and it can go either way she could have been the abuser to someone you know what i mean like it goes both ways in real life and stuff but it's kind of interesting to see it displayed as comic characters but yeah you know, so it's, it's a real world issue so if anyone's going through that you know i don't i don't mean to turn this into a literal psychiatry type of thing but yeah if that if that happens it's it's really best to seek an external help and stuff because that is a very tough and bad situation and nobody deserves to be in that position but just kind of taking a step away because I don't mean for this to get deeper or whatnot but it, it just kind of reminded me because I'm not saying I've been a part of it but I've seen close people to me who have been a part of it and it can be really bad and it can be very scary but yeah that's why it's just generalizing here their relationship has always been very interesting but way darker than the average audience knows uh, but no, her her character, I think she did a fantastic job with, again, Harley Quinn, because like dialogue and sort of mannerism and stuff was very much like her. Like she had that sort of seductive with acrobatic and stuff. That's very kind of baseline Harley Quinn, which she did really well. I know she had sort of a different appearance that was, again, it fit the description of Joker in this iteration more, kind of like... I want to say like hip hoppy, but it was like a more modern type of gangster look, you know, like big on jewelry and stuff and more, uh, I wouldn't say fashionable clothing, but it's again, it's more modern and such rather than like the skin tight suits and the classic circus look. So I, I mean, I guess it works, but again, it's, it's just weird because I'm being biased and seeing so many things where it's heavy comic accuracy and animated shows, movies, and games. So, again, as someone who's grown up with that and stuff, you you can't help but having a part of you that wants that comic accurate look and shit. But no, I think she did a great job. Her character was great. Same thing with Deadshot. My, I honestly, my least favorite was Killer Croc just because with Waylon Jones, I'm not like the biggest 
knowledgeable person about him and his condition that just evolutionized himself and obviously like there's variant comics where he's experimented on enhances his condition and such but he's always just generally portrayed as like this monstrous again croc kind of like dinosaur or whatever but he's always this monstrous figure i think he looked good with the fake like i obviously it was like makeup prosthetics would have some cg but it looked pretty good i just wish he was bigger because he looked like average size i mean he had superhuman strength so they got that right but it, it's just again coming from like the arkham games or whatever he's always portrayed as way bigger than a normal human because his bone density goes up and shit so i i, I feel like that's my biggest gripe. not not just with him not with the movie i'm not saying literally i hate the, i don't like this movie because of him that's not what i'm saying but with him my biggest issue is that just probably his height and then the fact that he says bruh and that he's beautiful i'm like it's different than when he's when you play the game and you're stuck in the sewers as, as batman he's like i'll like rip out and eat your heart and shit and then you're like he's like i'm beautiful I'm like okay okay <laughs> so that, that's just that but anyway just generalizing here for the film it was not as bad as i expected but Again, it's like what I said earlier. There were moments where it was like trying to be really good, but then it just fell short. So I think it was like an okay movie at best. If it was like a class, it wouldn't be a gr so so to speak. Let's say this was a paper that a student was submitting in class, and you just had to uh, no need to rhyme, but you just had the baseline pass. So like you get like a C or whatever, or C minus by no means is this an a like the best student in the class but they like they they managed to get along they managed to just pass by the little line of success it's just like just there but it's like hugging it. it's you know what i mean it's it's not done enough to kind of separate itself as a great film i mean that's obvious because people really have bashed this movie over the years critics and audience but i'm trying to be a little bit more lenient and see what's good about it because there's definitely are some good things but onto the james gunn one that's the suicide squad which is going to be different i don't know how i'm going to feel about that one because maybe it was honestly due to the fact that i never saw this one because when i watched the trailer the jokes weren't really landing for me i'm talking about the new the suicide squad by james gunn when i saw that trailer the jokes weren't really hitting for me or whatever and it might be partly due to me not seeing these characters first in this movie to have some sort of like understanding or relationship or whatnot. Because I, I loved both Guardians of the Galaxy, so it might be a little bit different to see him like sort of darken his humor because I'm pretty sure it's rated R. But also, there's no dead shot in the new one. I don't think Killer Croc is there. Apparently, some of the characters also die, I've heard. I did. Enchantress is gone. John Cena is in it now. Was uh, what is it? Peacemaker, peace, peacekeeper. I think it's peacekeeper. Not pe why am I saying peacemaker? Peacekeeper. Right? Yeah, I'm just looking at this. Okay, that's not really coming up. Oh shit! What's his name? Peacekeeper, right? John Cena, peace, peacemaker. I don't know. I was right. Shit! Why am I saying peacekeeper? Peacemaker, would I'm I'm not aware. That was the first time I ever heard of him. Was this? There's contrary to this film. There's a lot of villains or characters in the new one that I actually have never even heard of or don't know. And Peacemaker was one of them. But he has his own Disney, excuse me, Disney Plus, HBO Max show. It's weird because I'm watching all these Disney Plus shows right now. So I'm like how how is that gonna work you know i'm like uh okay technically nobody asked for it but uh, you never know i'm pretty sure some and i think james gunn is working on this and i think he posted something where it was someone who wasn't asking for something and then it turned out to be really successful technically guardians of the galaxy was the same exact way they were not like a big comic hit well maybe they were but they were more of a recent comic thing nobody knew the characters really who were watching the film i didn't and then you just fall in love with them. So reserve judgment before you see it. And especially since it's, again, in the hands of James. It's in the hands of James Gunn. So I'm pretty confident going in that it's going to be at least better than this and potentially a really good film. 
But more on sort of like that end sort of credit scene with Bruce Wayne, Batflick, Ben Affleck. And he's like saying, you know, essentially leave it to the Justice League and stuff. Like that should have been amazing. So it's just sad to see that they're trying to, I want to say replicate Marvel, but they are technically trying to world build, have character connection and shit. But they're, they're just failing at it. I always see memes where it's like DC's, like the little brother of Marvel, just trying to do what they do, but they're terrible at it. And you can't really lie. I'm not talking about DC. I'm talking about the DCU because it is kind of a mess. Which is sad because I really want DC to succeed. But I really think for now they just need to stick to independent films. Or at least just try to get some base cinematic universe going before they even do like Flashpoint. And try to reset it and do the multiverse and shit. You know? That's just, I'm, I'm just talking out loud now, but... There's something else I wanted to mention, but I can't quite remember. I think it had something to do with James Gunn, but yeah, no, this this film wasn't as bad as I thought, as I said, but it, again, it, it left a lot to be desired. So yeah, for the most part, I enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. I'm sorry. I, I try not to be negative during these things and stuff, so I'm sorry if this is like your favorite movie or whatever, and I don't mean to bash it or criticize it, but I'm just being honest here. I do think I'm going to be a lot more like kind of have more expectations with obviously Wonder Woman because that did great. Yeah, I'm going to watch Wonder Woman because that did great both like at the box office critic score, audience score, and the same thing for Aquaman. So when I watch those, I, I'm i sure I'm going to like end off with a better note, like better feeling like, yeah, I, I like that. And now I'm getting the hiccups, so it's definitely time to end this. I really feel like there's something else I wanted to say and I just can't quite remember. And this is gonna drive me nuts. Till the end of the day, I'm gonna be like, shit, what was it that I wanted to say? Nothing. Just a blankness right now. So yeah, we're just gonna end it off here. So like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Nah, I was gonna tell you what other movies I'm gonna do, but I'll just wait to do it because I do not intend to even like release this movie anytime soon because I, I, I have to like edit it and shit and that takes a long time to do a movie and especially since the beginning of my discussion was in such parts because I kept stopping because my discussion was like 50 minutes of me just talking about DC and shit so I'm gonna have to refrain from that and just try to work things out so as I said like four times I <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this one and until then I'll catch you folks in the next video